Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Hello and welcome. We've got a new group of gal pals who have been researching black history and found one cool thing that was so cool they had to share it with you. I'm Kim Thatcher and I'm excited to get started and hear everyone's one cool thing. But let's go around the table and introduce our gal pals. First up, she's a recurring guest of this show and the new gal guide library manager. But she's way more than that. Bonnie, tell the good people a little bit about you. Uh, I'm Bonnie Fillenworth, and I am a visual artist, and I paint women throughout history. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me again. Mm -hmm. Next up is a newbie to the show, but not a newbie to Gal's Guide. Our rock star speaker last February, and again this February, it's Eden. Eden, tell the good people about you and allow them to fall in love with you like we all have. Well, my name is Eden, and I'm an English tutor for Vincent's University for their early college program. I also love doing genealogy, and I've been doing genealogy since the mid-90s. So I'm all about the history. Oh, that's so wonderful. You guys are going to love her. Thanks for being with us, Eden. Thanks. Next, we have Gal's Guide with new editor and chief, Rebecca. Tell the good people about yourself. Hey, thanks, Kim. I'm, uh, my name is Rebecca. I've been involved with Gal's Guide for a while now, and my day job is I'm a lawyer, and I focus on representing creatives and various legal issues, and I'm also a freelance journalist and adjunct professor, so I wear many hats. Oh, very nice. Well, thanks for being with us again. Sure. As for me, I'm Kim Thatcher. Um, I am, I've been with Gal's Guide for a couple of years. I'm the event coordinator or meeting coordinator each month. Um, I am a photographer and I like being involved in all of the arts. I have a new passion, newfound passion for Gal's history, um, thanks to Gal's Guide. And I also work as an administrative assistant now for a, a realtor and property management company. So that's new to me and I'm excited about it. So this month, since it is Black History Month, who wants to go first and tell us about their one cool thing? Bonnie, would you like to go? <laughs> yeah, I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> okay. My one cool thing is the visual artist uh, Kara Walker. I've known about her work for um, since I was in um, college, and she's mostly known for doing these black silhouette cutouts. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about visual art on an audio podcast so you may have to look up these at home and i'm sure we'll have links to at least the art 21 has good resources on her um but she does these uh black silhouette cutouts of the antebellum south and they're they kind of talk about like racial violence and sexual violence they look like if you're far away they look like they're oh they're nice little pretty but then when you like kind of look closer you're like well some weird stuff going on there uh, but she does these cutouts um, another phase that she did where she had the black cutouts they were in a round room so it was like a who's it called a cyclotype I think was the word for it but one of those um, things where it's um, a round image and if you spin it really fast it's going to be like a movie and then after that she started adding like a old school projector and she would project color on them so the viewer would have to pass in between the projector and the wall so their shadow was also projecting on the wall so you kind of come become a part of the piece it was really cool because she's uh, at the january meeting last month she showed us visuals of everything and it was so impressive there were just a lot more dimensions than you'd think with a black and white like cut out of people and it was way more emotional you should definitely check her out yeah she's able to convey um like these characters and these narratives out of it's it's just black lines pretty much and then she took over there was a sugar factory that was closing and she and her team created this giant sugar baby sculpture that's kind of like a sexualized uh sphinx and she created all these little figures to go around her 
that um, they're actually like cast out of sugar and it was hot. So they were just kind of like melting in the hot. And she had a whole little invite, inviting people to this wonderful event. And another one I found out recently, she had a musical cart. She collaborated with a, a musical artist and she like kind of decorated the cart and they both did research into like this music that played near a slave trade station. And they they built this like organ pipes inside the cart. So it's it's a movable art piece, but they built it specifically for that site. And it plays this, it's kind of like a cheery, creepy music that plays while you're looking at this cart that's got some some weird figures on it. It really is. It wasn't the music I thought that it, yeah. I was going to hear. I thought it was going to be like one of those like boxes where you turn the handle and it goes do 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 yeah. you know, like with the monkey and everything. <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> Not at all. It was actually... It was it was very interesting. I would definitely look that up if you haven't heard it before. So she was born in California in the 70s and went to college in Atlanta. And I was re- recently listening to a lecture of hers where she talks about how different it was growing up in kind of California in the 70s where it's kind of like you can be friends with anyone. And then she moves to Atlanta and having a very different experience being like in the South and then she got her graduate at uh, RISD up in Rhode Island. And that she got a show like right after graduation and had like something in the Mo- Mona, the modern art museum. And she she got, well, I don't want to say lucky because she works hard, but she kind of like talks about it like, oh, it's kind of embarrassing. It's like, you're wonderful. Shut up. <laughs> no, that's awesome. We'll have uh, links to her stuff because it's really kind of hard to explain these like visually. Like there's there's so much. They're so heavy, even though they're just light pieces of paper. Oh, absolutely. Eden, have you seen this artwork before? I have not. And I find it really quite remarkable. I mean, I, I can't draw to save my soul at gunpoint. So when other people can do that, <laughs> right. I find it really <laughs> fascinating. But... Just the idea that these are cutouts, you know, that you know what to cut out to create what you're creating. This is just really stunning. It is the most graphic two-dimensional, like just black and white. You know what I mean? It's not shadowed or anything, but with the, um, just the text, I mean, there's texture. You can even see texture in it and movement. Um, it's just really impressive to me. I love, love the style. And it tells such a meaningful story, too, like a lot of different kinds of stories. It definitely it. looks like it's animated, mm-hmm. you know, like it should be moving. Absolutely. <laughs> and the idea yes. that it's not, that it is a still um, piece, is just really amazing. Mm-hmm. Rebecca, have you have seen this artwork before? Yeah, she has some stuff that's on display. Oh, I forget the name of it. I meant to look it up that um, at the art museum in Indianapolis. So there's like a huge room and it's all of like the cutouts that you're talking about. And it's definitely um, thought provoking and interesting and makes you, um, I think like you were saying, you need to, um, I'm trying to think of the word I'm trying to think of, but basically just think about, I guess, our country's history of racism and slavery and and it's it's in there sometimes it's a little more nuanced or subtle than um than you might know until you look a little bit deeper i think is that what would you guys agree with that absolutely yes Mm -hmm. i haven't seen it at the indianapolis museum Uh, how is it set up is it set up where you kind of sit in the room and look at the wall or is it just a smaller painting or not paintings but the smaller like yeah, so it's a projection on the wall. Okay. So you can, so it lo- like you said, it looks like one of, I can't remember who said this, but one of you said it looks like it should be moving, even if it's not moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just the way it's, you know, very dynamic in its um, shapes. But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's still there because I, because once I saw, I was um, editing last night the book list. And so once I saw that book, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. And I didn't realize it was the same artist that also did the sugar baby artist, because mm. I remember how controversial that was 
when it was put on display because people, I don't know if you, and if you already mentioned this, sorry if I'm repeating, but people were meant, um, taking selfies with it and oh. being just, and very like, dis- it was very just disrespectful. And I think she, uh, I'd have to look it up, but I think she even came out against like how, just how it was being observed as art. And she's like, it's, it's meant to make a statement and people aren't getting it maybe if they think it's funny to take, you know, selfies with this sphinx like creature or whatever. But it was, um, yeah, it's very, that, but I did remember reading about that. So I think was, is it in Brooklyn or Queens or sorry, Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting because there's, there's things online on like YouTube and there's a few on like podcasts. I was listening to her doing like a college lecture, which is driving me nuts because she's brought all these slides of like her early work. So I'm like frantically trying to find like the visual of it because I'm like, oh, that would be so cool to see these things. Um, but the way she just naturally speaks, she's just, she's kind of quiet and soft. I mean, she's definitely, I mean, she knows what she's talking about. Like, she's not going to like beat around the bush about all these things. Mm -hmm. But then her work is so, it's so striking and bold and violent. So it's, it's kind of funny when you hear her speak for the first time. Well, I find her interesting, too, because she's still alive, so she can speak yes. about her art. And like a lot of artists we've talked about before here where, yeah, like she's still current and she still can respond to what, um, what people think of her art or, or just what she's trying to say. Absolutely. So many times like we talk about history in general, and then it's about people who don't still have a voice because they have already passed so it's really right. amazing when we find someone who's so impactful and we can still ask them as many questions as we want to because they're still here for everybody to make a difference uh, the artwork that I'm particularly interested in I'm not sure we covered it at the meeting in January do we have any images about like when where or videos about where people their own shadows were cast and kind of their reactions about being in those projections? There's there's some if you just do a Google image search for like her and projections. Yeah. I wonder like is it like the full person as the same size as the um uh... well it would be like a, the closer you get the smaller your shadow is going to get going to be because mm-hmm. it's just like an old school projector like that you have in like a classroom and she's created this um like a clear sheet that's got colors on it oh, i wow. sent a, i just sent everybody a link i don't know if you can see that on discord whoever's on discord on this call that's the indianapolis one i was talking about we can put that mm-hmm. on the website too of course so yeah that's oh, how they wow. have it it's okay. just like one oh neat it's so like they one, added it's one to the actual wall. image well, that's all part. I think that's all part of. That's like what she had. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, at the the IMA just now, Newfields. It was like right off of the escalator on like the third or fourth floor. I want to say the fourth because that's where they have the contemporary art. Yeah. Um, but it's it's kind of weird because it's kind of separate from the rest of the contemporary art it's like you go, you're going the other way that would be fascinating too um and a projector style what we're looking at um in this room is there's a big wall there's a a shadow the shadow figures on the wall and then the projector is projecting one of the transparencies onto the wall it would be interesting to take about 10 different transparencies of different backgrounds like one would be a party one would be mm-hmm. outside one would right. be then it would get a little bit darker and then you know I mean just different facets of how you could actually picture those people in the um, situation that you may have not originally thought of them being in it would be fascinating to see the projected background going through time Yes, and then the cutout Absolutely. is the mm-hmm. same. Remains the same, mm-hmm. but you're kind of seeing it in a different historical context with each different. Oh, I would like that a you lot. You know, kind of time period. Absolutely. Even per decade, you know, right? Be interesting at a school, like one of like right one of the. Mm. These are all just so fascinating. They're We're very just like, fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so involved in just like 
looking at it and then you kind of have to create your own story in your head sometimes depending on if there is a, a background or not oh and i did recently i was watching earlier today she has these like puppet shows i'm not even sure they're they're the silhouettes and she's making them move with like strings and stuff and it was it was very weird i only got like halfway through it but it was it's it's these silhouettes like moving and it was kind of like she shot it in like a grainy it looks like an old film i like how she uses color sometimes in color yeah they got like little uh, just monochromatic sure other times what... right mm -hmm. right so i'm pretty sure they're still flat so i'm not sure if that's still called like puppetry or animation like i'm not even sure what category that quite so in that into. sense they're moving the the figure with their hands yeah they almost like a marionette kind of yeah. yeah well i think oh. yeah i think that's maybe part of it's like supposed to kind of look like puppets and strings and there's all kinds of stuff i know the art museum has their like the description's pretty long to explain what's going on and it could be because she's still alive when they installed it so they had you know more of a resource for it than maybe some of the other artists that they feature but i but i do remember reading it and because it is that one room it, you do spend a lot of time in there if you get into it to just really think about it and and give it some um give it your full attention because there's nothing else going on in that mm -hmm. space except that that image well now i have a reason to go to the art museum I know. <laughs> yes. oh my goodness <laughs> She's got it's installations. been years since I've been there. Me too. Oh, she's got installations all over the world. So impressive. Absolutely. I'm trying to find. I'll send. Um, I'll send a link to the article too. I was talking about about the selfies. Mm. It's kind of. Um, you'll see when you get it. There are a few different articles about it, so it's kind of a big, mm. a big to do. Oh, cool. Does anyone have anything else to say about this artist or any questions or anything like that? Just check out. We'll, we'll include some links in the show notes so you can actually see what we're talking about. Oh, absolutely. So definitely check out those links. Go to the Indiana Museum. Um, tell us what you think. Give us some feedback about what you think of the artist. And so, yep, looks like the links are going up there right now. So. Well, that wraps it up for this week. Join us next week as our next gal pal shares her one cool thing as Black History Month continues on Gal's Guide to the Galaxy podcast. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gal's Guide patron today. Thanks for listening. <laughs>